Hi, I'm John. Yes? Great. Uh, so I will be uh, coding a little bit, so if you want to come a little or, uh, in front, it's better. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I would like to thank Science Geek for organizing such cool event and also all the other events. Um, today I will talk about AngularJS. And uh, just before going into the subject, let me tell you what I'm doing in Bangalore. So uh, I'm the co-founder of Minch. Minch is a Swiss startup, and uh, we specialized in uh, web development and UX. And uh, one year and a half ago, we, we went in Bangalore with only this. Uh, back in Switzerland, we sold everything. and. Uh, we came to the Silicon Valley of India. And uh, we were very happy about it. We settled here. And now we're based in uh, Indiranagar. We have uh, offices there. And we're looking forward to expand uh, in the coming months. Also, uh, we're uh, organizing the Bangalore GS user group. So if you're there next month, November 17, you should, you should come. Uh, you can go on bangalorejs.org to see more uh, details. Okay, so let's go to the, the talk. Uh, uh, around the 95, uh, when the web was becoming really mainstream, um, you know, we had these tools, HTML, CSS, for doing documents, static web page, and basically web apps at this time were round trip apps. Uh, like you click on a button, you wait, and then the server replies you uh, with a new page. And then suddenly we have this Ajax. Uh, with this, you can do like really full-fledged app, like uh, Gmail, for example. Um, and uh, be because you can update partial view of your web page. And then suddenly in 2005, it's wow, we have jQuery. Finally, a good uh, unified, consistent API so that we can uh, do these Ajax queries and not worry about uh, we, which, we, will it run on this browser or not. And more importantly, we can do now with jQuery uh, DOM manipulation. So that, yeah, we, we, we've been doing crazy apps uh, with this. And our uh, app.js files, you know, is becoming like 1,000 line long. And uh, suddenly, uh, it's 2,000 line long. And when it's 4,000 line long, we feel like this. Because too much jQuery leads to spaghetti code, right? Because it's not meant to structure your app. Fortunately, over the years, we have some new libraries helping us, like underscore. It's not really helping us to tr structure the code, but we get some functional programming uh, that we can use uh, in JavaScript, and it helps to reduce the number of lines of codes. And we have also Backbone. And this is, uh, with these three libraries, finally we can uh, create web app with uh, structure. Uh, personally, I'm using Backbone almost every day. I find it really awesome. And uh, you can do great apps. But if we, if we look at this stack, you know, it's based on jQuery, and we, we pile up libraries on top of it. And we get, in our code, a lot of this kind of jQuery selector, which use CSS selector, so that we can write code and attach it at certain parts of the DOM. Um, the problem is that this CSS selector, they are used for styling, so not for attaching code. So for example, if the web designer of the page decides one day to change a class name, to another, so container become foobar, then the code breaks. And that's bad. So what can we do about it? So let me ask you a question. What would you feel if today I tell you, OK, you're not allowed to use jQuery anymore? Yeah, I would feel like that also. So uh, this guy at AngularJS, they said, OK, uh, HTML is good. JavaScript is good. These are good tools. 
Uh, but jQuery, maybe we should just use it to style the page or do animation. And um, 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 they, 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 they find these tools good, HTML and JavaScript. So they just want to add some stuff on top of it so that it's better for us to create uh, web apps. So let me show you some code. I hope you can see it. So it's a, it's a simple um, HTML5 file. And I have included uh, three different uh, files. One is a bootstrap CSS, so that it's a bit nicer. And then we have the AngularJS file and uh, Angular resource file, which will be helpful later on. So let's begin with the Hello World example. So I'm just writing these double curly braces, which are uh, the way how you have output stuff in your HTML with uh, the, the Angular syntax. You can see on the output on the right that it's not working yet. It's because we need to tell Angular where is our app. So for this, you can specify the ng app uh, directive. For, for me, it's, uh, I just want to tell uh, Angular, OK, my app is all, all my file. But you can decide to put it at some point in your, uh, just uh, select a small part of your HTML. So an hello world example is not complete without the world, right? So you can see you can do small expression like this, even use some uh, uh, filters that Angular gives you so that you can uppercase the strings. There is many more. Uh, let me then show you uh, an input text. Input type text like this. And uh, what I want to do is to type text inside so that this text is displayed somewhere else in my HTML. Um, for this, I can add the, the ng model directive on my input. Let's call it, this is my query model. And then I can just use this double curly braces uh, syntax and do something like that. So that let me just add something. Uh, let me shorten the input with uh, thanks to Bootstrap. Yes, OK. And you see, I type hello. It's there uh, automatically. So it's really kind of uh, declarative programming. You just say, I want this, and it's working. If I have an example with, um, this is the same thing with uh, jQuery, right? I tap something and uh, it's up here. You see, it's very much more verbose. It's really like uh, imperative programming. You should really say, OK, do stuff like this. Mm. No. I need to go back. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. So, uh, what? Um, so let's continue now. What uh, I want to show you now is how to do a very simple uh, movie search engine with the help of the uh, the Rotten Tomatoes API. So let's do that. Uh, I will first add a button so that I can submit my query. This is a search button, like this. And I uh, styled it a bit, like this. And uh, I want to align a bit things. I add a form, form horizontal class around. And it's, it's better, OK? Um, now, let's see how I will display my results. I will display them with a list, like this. I will uh, display, uh, each movie will be an item. Okay, movie one, 
ou V2. Something like that. I don't want the bullet. So I unstyle class. Okay. Um, but now I want to do something a bit uh, uh, smart and use the, the Angular uh, facilities so that I can uh, get all this uh, list of items uh, programmatically. I can use the ng repeat directive like this and tell, okay, uh, display all movie in my results. Okay. And I do this. Okay. And for this, I need to write, write some JavaScript code. And uh, I will create uh, a controller. So let's call it search controller. And each controller in Angular receives a dollar scope variable, which is the link between the, the HTML, the views, and the, the code. Uh, and for example, I will say scope dot results. It's uh, an array of movies. Let's put some uh, movies. Do you know this one? And maybe another one, blooper, which is quite cool. Um, and it should work when I tell where the, so the controller will be applied. So to make things simple, I just say, OK, my controller will control all the body and all what is inside it. OK. Yes, you see, we have our two movies. And uh, I only had to write this. So if we have many movies, this, this will work. Um, now, let's use the, the button, the, the search button. So uh, when I will click on this button, I should receive the movies, right? So I, I use the ng click directive. And I will use the, the search function. And I can specify the search function in my uh, controller. Like this. Um, and what I can do is that when I click the search button, I get the results. OK. Yes, it's working. OK, so now let's uh, really connect with the Rotten Tomatoes API so that we can get real results. For this, I will uh, declare a Rotten Tomatoes variable. And I will just copy paste some code here. Good. So basically what I'm doing here is specifying a, a resource, resource with the, the, the API uh, entry, some API key and telling uh, Angular, OK, this is a JSONP request um, like this. And I need to tell, OK, to tell Angular, OK, in my search controller, I will use, I need the service uh, resource. Don't, I just add it on the parameters of the controller, like this. And then I can just fetch the results when I click the button. Yes. I do a get, and I specify my query. Q is uh, another parameter to the API call. And my query will be coming from $scope.query, like this. And, and it's not working. It's not working because um, I need to specify, I need to tell Angular, OK, this service, this resource, why, where, uh, where it does it come from? So first, I need to, to name my app. Let's name it movie search. And then I can connect my 
create an Angular module with the name of my app, like this, and specify that I will, I want to use the NJ resource. This is coming from the, the NG, uh, Angular resource files, the second one I linked. And now, I hope it will work. Yes, I get some JSON directly. So uh, here, this is an example of what the Rotten Tomatoes API gave me. So you can see that uh, I don't get directly the movies, I get them on the movies key. So I can change that and also we can see that in each movie there is a posters key and inside we have several images. Let's, let's use these images. So uh, first in the results I want the movies key and then I want to display some image, some poster image from the movies. And I don't want to, to type each time the, the query, so let's hard code it. Let's make it Superman, like this. And let's see what's happened. Yes, so we get now, for each movie we get an image. And let's make a proper image so, can we, so that we can see the picture. Mm. Internet is working. Okay. I think. Uh, oh, image source. No, it should work like that. Okay. So, let's continue a bit. Maybe it's an internet problem. I don't know. But what we can add also is the, 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 the ratings. So I can see in ratings that critics rating, I have something interesting. Oh, okay, it's internet. So internet can be, so please don't use internet. <laughs> so I can see uh, all, the, um, all the Superman movies that have been done, you see. Quite cool. Let's just add the, the critics. So, for each movie dot uh, rating dot critics rating. Let's just see if it's that <coughs> ratings critics rating. Okay. So now let's pray. <coughs> Okay, it should uh, work with the critics movie at some point, maybe. Okay. Okay, so basically, yeah, we saw that we are able to, to make some kind of uh, uh, search engine, really simple one. And uh, yeah, maybe we I try again and okay, it's good. It's there. So you can see the first movie is maybe not out yet. This is why we don't get ratings. We see that the latest one they are certified fresh, so that we should see them. And then becoming yeah, the Superman three and Superman four, we should avoid them, right? It's rotten. So let's go back to the presentation and so I showed you quickly. Uh, bidirectional binding of uh, of models. So basically, you can on the, co on the controller and also on the HTML access the, the models. Uh, we have seen uh, rapidly how to do a REST accessing a REST API, and also we have seen directives which can be element name 
attribute or class name. And basically what you can do also is to create your own tags. So for example, I could create the movie tag and then uh, uh, create a template for this movie so that this movie tag becomes some more uh, complex HTML. That's a very nice way to do templating, I think. So uh, I then go back to the question of the talk. Is it time to drop everything off for it? Um, before I ask you guys what do you think, uh, my opinion is that uh, if you are already using Backbone and you, you took some time to understand and everything, maybe it's not time yet to use it uh, because um, uh, the doc, the documentation is not so consistent yet, but it will improve, I'm sure. And uh, also, uh, I would say, if you go to the Backbone, for example, uh, Git repository, you see there is, there is uh, very little files. This is quite cool, you, like, uh, you, feel, uh, you feel good when you see this. And uh, when you go to the Angular uh, site, you see there is many files. <laughs> and even if you look, there is Ruby files, Java files. You don't really know at first uh, why this is there, you know? But at the end, we just include the, um, the, these JS files in our HTML. Okay, thanks. Um, and so, see, if you have not uh, used Backbone yet, maybe, if, and you feel adventurous, Maybe it would be good to jump directly with Angular because the, your code is really uh, less code than even with Backbone. And uh, I think the, it's pretty cool if you try it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So, uh, do you have, uh, what is your opinions, guys? Uh, do you have questions? Yep. So, uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, understand the performance implications. Yes. So it looks like uh, internally the JavaScript would be scanning the entire uh, document to scan those fields, right? Exactly. Uh, yes. in, in your, uh, when you were worked on it, uh, did you feel any performance implications? Uh, not really. Uh, on mobile, I felt that it was slow, but I think also on mobile there is some uh, issue with uh, the clicking, you know, with, uh, like this. They add maybe sometimes uh, some delay or something like that. So that would be something uh, to check. But I don't think it's, uh, it's quite fast. Okay. The second question is uh, uh, the NS or NG, uh, the tags, yeah. attributes you were adding, uh, is it not making the entire HTML uh, as a non standard? Uh, yeah, is it sure. not a non standard way of uh, using HTML? Yeah, it is. <laughs> but uh, there is um, uh, several ways to, uh, to make it uh, like uh, valid HTML. For example, you, could, you, you can write data dash ng dash, okay. you know, yeah, yeah. or uh, like namespace ng namespace uh, something. So uh, it would identify the data hyphen ng as well, the AngularJS framework? Yeah, 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 there is several ways to write these directives. Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Some of the ways they are, they make it, they make your HTML valid. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, JavaScript, yeah. This. Uh, so you just make a normal assignment over there, scoped query is equal to Superman. How does AngularJS actually, you know, respond to this event? I mean, this does it use ECMAScript 5, uh, you know, getters and setters or something? Or? This line. Yeah, I mean, how does it, uh, how does AngularJS work? Yeah, so basically here there is an async call, right? So you don't get your, uh, your data uh, directly. But uh, Angular is like smart and then when it's getting the data from the remote server, it will do what you want, that is uh, populating the results uh, variable. Is, is it the question? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, my, my question is, uh, you, you're um, reading from the, um, you know, from the JSON resource, 
and then you have that line over there that is uh, scope dot results is equal to uh, rotten tomatoes dot dot. Uh, so yes. it's it's an equal to uh, I mean it's an assignment, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, when that when you make the assignment, Angular needs to know that uh, scope dot results this variable has changed, and then it needs to update the. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay. Right. I used knockout JS uh, before this, and uh, in knockout JS you have this concept of observables. Yeah. And you have to kind of call the setter function. I mean, if you just do an assignment, it doesn't work. You have to call a setter function, and then you know it it yeah. does so that. I yeah. So basically, they they scan your uh, they compile your HTML, and they know uh, all the variables that you have, your models, and they, they then they set up uh, some kind of watches over them. And then they continuously watch uh, if there is changes, like they recompute stuff also. And if the new result is different from the old one, they know oh we have to change the HTML, oh, the okay. DOM. We have to update the DOM. Okay, so it's running a background loop which yeah, checks yeah. for changes. And okay. then they optimize so that it's not like uh, okay. slow. Uh, yeah. uh, thanks.